Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 10, Episode 4. You can find this by uh, looking in the search bar at YouTube. You will not find it on Prime Video. And I also want to say this is a week episode, which is a terrible way to introduce a YouTube video if you want viewers, but I'm going to be honest with you, it's it's week. But let's get started. And if you'd be so kind, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thumbs up are fabulous and subscribes are fabulous too. Here we go. So in order to be on the program, you have to submit a self-portrait, and that's what you're judged on. This looks pretty fantastic to me. Yeah. So I know I, in my introduction I said it was a weak field, but hang in there with me. We shall see. Now, again, I'm taking these from a screen capture on YouTube, and it just doesn't have the exact same quality and framing that the Prime Video does, but it gives us an idea of what was going on. Uh, this would have been uh, first, this was done in 2023. So it's it's fun to see what was what was currently happening because we really don't know if Prime Video will pick up this, this series or not. Uh, they certainly have let the landscape series go. So I don't know what's going to happen with the Portrait Artist of the Year series. Here's a very exaggerated type of portraiture. And this is going to come into play later, which is... Um, this is the kind of thing that they have passed up time and time and time again. Not every, not 100% of the time, but, but a lot of the time. Um, this looks really strong as well. And uh, Now, remember, the prize is a final commission, a $10,000 commission. And this year, they are going to paint um, Jane Goodall. The, um, is she an anthropologist? Well, she's known for her primate research with chimps, I believe. So um, I'll have to Google so that I can be more aware as we get further on in the series. But I actually don't think, uh, I could only find four episodes from 2023. So I won't be able to complete, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the series the way I have in the past. So we continue to look at the self-portraits. And it doesn't look like it's going to be a weak episode by these efforts, but uh, but it's it it is a very strange episode, especially because the episode before this was extremely strong. That looks I, I enjoy that that point of view, right? Kind of we talked about a drone shot in Landscape Artist of the Year. There's a drone shot of yourself maybe in your kitchen. I don't know. Oh, this is. We have seen this kind of thing before, um, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Now, the judges want a very varied field, and so they have done that. Good for them. Now, let's see how that comes into play. Our first model up is Ainsley Harriet, and Ainsley is an English chef and a TV presenter. Very expressive. And they put him in front of, they, they seem to be doing like color blocking. That's what they seem to be doing behind the um, models for a couple of years now. They used to really set the stage, but, but not so much anymore. Here we go. The artists turn their easels around. Now they have four hours all together, but that's actually not the truth. They have two hours, then lunch, and then two hours. They can paint during that hour of lunch. As a matter of fact, there are some other built-in times that they can paint if they want to. So here's our first painting up. I, I really like this. It, it has this capture, you know, in terms of expression. So you get a feeling of what the personality is. He's got some lovely, or she has some lovely color spots of value using those. You see those, the orange on the chin, the orange on the uh, right side of the, uh, the face under the nose. That brings some warmth to those kind of uh, brownish tones. Ooh, see that real, that's a lovely use of orange and a good mix of neutrals. So your neutrals still are, have um, some rich color in them. You know, the neutral of the violet over the eye. That's, that's cl clever and really adds to the impact, which we can see uh, close up. Now we go further away. It's a large and ambitious piece. She came up, she got the Today, she got the job done. Good for her. She looks like a very strong candidate. 
um, which I'm probably wrong about. Now this one, this is, um, I don't really have a lot to say about this painting. There's, there's some, um, y there are some issues when it comes to the, um, it's uh, the structure of the face. It's, it's, it's just, yeah. Ooh. Um, just mathematically in terms of proportion, I don't think it, it, it's, it's correct. It doesn't have to be correct, but then if it's not correct, then it has to be a really strong painting. And it's just not, it's a, it's a pretty weak painting. There's not a lot of pigment being used here. And that's okay, you know, it's a really high key painting. You can have a high key painting, meaning you don't let your values get too dark and everything is keyed up, but you, you really have to have some strong painting then. This is an interesting device. They wanted to paint small, but they wanted a larger format, so they used some design elements. I think that's a clever thing to do. Does it work or doesn't it work? I'm not sure. Um, I'm leaning toward really liking it, but let's look at it cropped. Yeah, see, cropped, that is so strong and still has the design elements as well. So in a way, it's kind of too bad that, that uh, this person will probably be penalized simply for the size, but but who knows? I have no idea what the judges are thinking when they make their decisions. Let's. Ha oh, and I forgot to say Ainsley Harriet is going to pick one to take home, which is an honor. That has nothing to do with the final judging. And let's see which one he picks. He picks this one. Well, good. I would have picked that one too, Ainsley. So good job on that one. I mean, that stands as a really good painting as well, not just a portrait of him. So we're looking at two things. Does it resemble our sitter and also is it a good painting? Rory Stewart is our next sitter, and he is a British independent politician. Hmm. Very, uh, very tall and thin fellow, which um, comes into play when we look at the interpretations of what the artist did. Here's the first one up. This was the woman who had sort of an elongated portrait of herself, and that's what she did with Rory as well. Now, he sort of has the physique that kind of leans toward that anyway. So she's sort of exaggerating what he already has as a sort of exaggerated features. Um, it's, it's interesting. Let's, let's take a look now at the scale of it because that's important too. Remember, we just saw a very small painting. Okay, so, you know, she suffered from what we, we know happens. You only have four hours. So she mapped in the most important things and then concentrated on the face. That was a smart thing to do. I do think she'll be judged on what she did, not on what she did not accomplish. But I also really appreciate that she anchored the figure in rather than giving us just a, a head surrounded by um, nothing. You know what I call islands, an island surrounded by oceans. Here's the next one. Um, I really like the brush stroking in this. Oh, I just wish, this is really petty on my part, but, but just, Please put a line in for the shoulders. Please don't leave me just a neck. It always gives me this feeling that, that the head has been like a, uh, you know, an animal on a wall where the head just sticks out. It's just, oh, something about it. Just, oh, there, okay, I'm sorry. That's my apologies. I couldn't, when we came in for a close-up, I couldn't get a feel for that shoulder. Oh, well, I would have put some of the other shoulder in as well. I just think that would have helped because the, the, the head is, is, is very big in proportion to the space around it. But that's getting really picky. It's really, really a beautiful portrait. This one is my favorite from this grouping, though, I, I, because this, is, this just captures, you know, we saw him sit and then when we saw him stand, this is a real capture of, of the man. And I think that's what you want in a portrait. Anybody who comes from a portrait wants a full sense of who they are kind of for eternity, I guess. Oh, I think, just think that's beautiful. Again, I tend to like paintings that have soft edges. You see how there's no drawing going on there? You're not gonna, there are no lines. No lines were made. What they did instead was they use forms and then your brain is turning it into the shapes that resemble a face. There are virtually no lines in this painting. Well, almost no lines in this painting. And that's, for me, that's a sign of a really good painter. Yeah, look at that. That's really beautiful. Now she must have done this from um, using technology, which is fine, you're allowed to, but he was sitting. So, um, so you know, the way you get to the end of the painting is the way you get to the end of the painting. Let's see which one Rory picks to go home. Okay, he picks this one. Well, great. 
that'll be wonderful in his home. I do really like the neutrals and the colors in this painting as well, and a softness. Yeah, this one as well doesn't have a lot of lines in it. Um, you know, I'm a colorist, so I'm always, um, I do lean toward paintings that have more color in them, but I've been, I've been, I also love when neutrals are used extremely well. All right, our next model up is Rob Delaney. Rob Delaney is a British comedian. <laughs> uh, he's not familiar to me, but if you live in Britain, then you probably are familiar with him. Now again, four hours in, the arts are going to turn their easels around. Although one of my interviews with an artist um, I've done some interviews with artists who participated in the program. You, you actually do have six hours altogether if you want to use them, but that's if you take absolutely no breaks, which means you aren't breaking for lunch or anything, and that, that's an extended amount of concentration for your brain to do. Um, here's the first one up. I, I don't like this from far away very much. It, uh, my first impression was, wow, that's that's incredibly weak, but hold on a second, because we come in, when they do a detail of it, that's really strong, so I really like that. So maybe it was the lighting? I'm not sure. We're going to, um, I think we get a chance to look at this again. Um, let's take a look at this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I think it probably was a stronger painting than that particular screen capture showed us. Um, and we can see the size. Um, okay. On to the next one. This one, uh, this one looks stiff and weak to me. Uh, it's not. There's nothing wrong with it. It just, it, it's. Uh, oh, it's one of those paintings where it doesn't look like it came from the canvas. It isn't emerging from the canvas. It's as if it was painted somewhere else and then pasted on instead. There are ways that you can make your figure more integrated into the background. I always like these things better when they're cropped because I guess I tend to like things that don't that don't really float in space. I like a uh, oh and and there's a lot of unresolved space around there. But again, I'm sure that the person ran out of time. You're going to run out of time. It's just just the way the program is structured. So uh, and what she did. now this is this is an odd one for me because what this person did was do the head and then the lower body above. I just I love design elements. You know, you take that's the reason you're an artist, not just to replicate what you see in front of you, but to do something with it. But I don't I don't understand this, and it seems like an odd device to me, which is it's okay to have an odd device. But then I ask myself, does it work? Those circles kind of don't work for me. I yeah, that's, that's puzzling to me. Anyway, Rob Delaney picks one to take home, and let's see which one he picks. I don't know. Any of them would be just fine. Okay, picks this one. So be it. On to the final judging. Now, the judging begins, and all the artists are lined up. After a really exhausting day of traveling to London and having the hot television lights, being having interviews, noise from the crowd behind you, the time constraints, and not being in your studio. It would be just, it takes a special person who's willing to take this on, and, and many of us uh, would not consider it under any circumstances. Here's the first one up that they pick. I have no idea why they would pick this one. I guess I'm going to go with it's something that we have never seen before, where someone's taken the figure and and chopped it in this way. This one, I, uh, this, I have to think for a second. Was this the best painting of the day? Um, I don't, I don't know. There's one that I liked better, but they're not going to go for that one. So um, this is a strong contender. Let's see what the next one is. Yeah, this one. Okay. Well, if you like elongated caricatures, I can never say that word correctly. Um, so be it. Uh, well, now we get to look at their self-portraits next to what they did today. Self-portraits, they ha had all the time to do that they wanted, and today they only had a four hours. So we're looking for consistency of style, which this person definitely has. She's going to take a form and make it extended. That's her thing. She's also going to give you a lot of line work, and um, so be it. That's, that's what she does. Let's see the next one up. This is, um, I guess he's really interested in texture. There's a lot of texture going on. 
and cutting people's forms up <laughs> to halves, which is uh, um, interesting. I still find it baffling, uh, which maybe I'm being closed-minded here. I'm, I'm going to go with it. I'm not being closed-minded. I don't like when forms are cut. Uh, I it it always makes it unresolved for me. Or oh yay oh I would like to see of 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 them. I would like to see her go forward. I think I think she could do the final commission. I think she so sense shows sensitivity, a good amount of color work, and real accuracy when it came to um, getting a. Uh, a resemblance. Yeah, when we pull away, now you can see them. They're all better from very far away, but um, they all work. You know, art is a matter of taste. Let's see what the judges pick in terms of taste. And as always, I won't like what they do, but let's get ready for it. We must be brave and move on. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Yes, yes, once again, the judges never fail to disappoint me in choosing something that I wish they hadn't, or passing up some other things that I thought were just great. And that's the way the program is. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.